Sabrina is gone. Uh, let's see if she comes back. Share screen. OK. So, um, donc, on est le 27 mai. On, on a... Um, on, on, on fait une, 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 une web conférence sur le thème des maladies dans les semences de tomates et on a invité euh, le docteur Daniel Hegel, de, euh, qui est pathologiste euh, végétal à, à Purdue en, euh, en, euh, en Indiana. Euh, il, est, il va venir nous parler aujourd'hui des euh, maladies dans les semences de tomates à la demande de Olivier Légaré, euh, qui, avec qui, qui nous a partagé plusieurs photos. Euh, donc, le plan de match aujourd'hui, c'est euh, on va faire un, un tour de présentation des, des participants. Puis, euh, quand vous, euh, vous pouvez vous donner le nom de votre ferme, de votre région, par claviomètre, euh, donc sur la, la section de chat. Si c'est possible de garder votre micro fermé, comme ça, on ne va pas avoir de feedback. Puis, euh, on, on va, je vais présenter quelques, une, faire une introduction de Monsieur de Dr. Hegel. Puis, euh, euh, donner quelques ressources qu'il m'a qu envoyées. Puis euh, ensuite, après ça, on va euh, regarder des photos de, euh, des, euh, des tomates que Olivier nous a envoyées. Et, euh, et, euh, et ensuite, on va pouvoir poser nos, nos questions de façon, euh, de, pour faire un question-réponse. Euh, donc ça, c'est les ressources qui nous, que, 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 euh, que Daniel nous a envoyées. Euh, il y en a une sur la gestion des maladies, sur euh, différents traitements. Puis, euh, il y en a un autre sur la, la production de semences de tomates. J'ai ajouté les laboratoires euh, de microbiologie au, accrédités au Québec. Donc, on pourra euh, se référer à ces documents euh, au besoin pendant la discussion. Euh, Daniel, il est, il est situé en Indiana. Donc, c'est euh, euh, en dessous de Mich de, du Michigan. On est à, à, à je ne sais pas combien d'heures, mais c'est le début du Midwest. Et euh, il a un programme d'extension, euh, il offre des, des, des conseils comme, euh, comme service d'extension à des producteurs de légumes sur les maladies. Puis, euh, il a fait la sélection dans les cultures vitacées, des essais de produits certifiés bio et de fongicides bio et conventionnels dans, euh, dans les solonacées et les cultures vitacées. Et il utilise des, des modèles, des logiciels de prévision euh, euh, qu'on parlait tantôt. Quelques, euh, quelques termes qu'on peut utiliser euh, en français et en anglais pour, pour parler de différentes maladies qu'on euh, qu trouve dans, dans les semences. Je n'ai pas trouvé la traduction pour le tomato brown rugos fruit virus. Donc, euh, donc on, va, on, va, on va utiliser ce terme-là. Euh, ça, c'est un, un, des, des, des maladies que, 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 qu on, que, qui ont été identifiées déjà par, par rapport à leurs leur dégâts sur les semences. Et il y en a d'autres. Il y en a d'autres. Là, c'est juste un, un simple. Euh, donc, ça, c'est les, les photos de, de Olivier que, qui nous a envoyées. Puis, on peut, on peut utiliser ça comme point de départ. Euh, Daniel, I, I just gave a brief introduction, uh, I shared a bit about your bio, the resources you sent us, and, uh, and I just wanted to. Uh, to uh, offer a few translated terms and, uh, and the photos that Olivier sent us. So, um, Olivier, est-ce que tu veux commencer? <laughs> um, yeah, hello, uh, da Daniel. Hi. <laughs> so I'm uh, from uh, Quebec. I have uh, my own uh, seed company, it's called Les Semences du Bateau. Um, and um, I received many uh, emails uh, about uh, clients that uh, have problems with tomatoes uh, inside. Uh, so I found a very, uh, not much um, information about the early stage of uh, sickness in, in tomatoes. Um, probably that the, the, the number six is probably the, the most dangerous one. That's uh, one friend uh, that uh, had uh, that. He was from Kamouraska region in Quebec, Eastern, and uh, he, he sent, uh, he, yeah, he sent uh, uh, those uh, plants uh, to laboratories uh, to, to know uh, what happened. 
and uh, that the uh, sickness uh, attacked uh, his tomatoes uh, as well as his, uh, all his uh, peppers plant. What 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 is six then? Um, <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. It's a very it's a small uh, tomato leaf that have a brown um, uh, area on them. Did you did you did you say that um, he sent it away to a lab? Yes, he did. Did did he get a uh, an official diagnosis then? Not yet. Oh, I see. Looks like he he, he threw everything uh, away. Uh, oh. it, it was very contagious uh, as well. So the these are all different things. They aren't in the same. Um, the same person at the same time. Yeah, as, uh, that's right. Uh, they are not from, uh, they're all over the, the plate. <laughs> it's, it's not just one very unlucky person, huh? No, not the same. <laughs> well, number six, if, if I had it in my lab, I would uh, look for bacterial streaming at, in, in the leaf, but I, I, can't, I can't tell for sure if that's what that is. The, the way that the, the lesions are, I mean, it certainly could be bacterial spot, but, but it, it, it's just hard to, to tell from, from that mm -hmm. photo. Mm -hmm. um, but the other photos, um, you know, there's no disease that, that it comes to mind unless it's a root disease. Sometimes there's root diseases which, which can cause the, the top of the plant to, to look poor. Mm -hmm. So I guess what I'd have to do is to, to pull up the plant and look at the roots. It looks like the root uh, to me uh, too. Uh, I know in French uh, we call it la fonte des semis. Um, I've heard about the fusarium uh, oh. my sickness as well. Um, I don't know much about the root uh, sickness. Well, so what you would expect, so, I mean, it's certainly possible for it to be fusarium, and, and, and we know the fusarium can be carried in the seed, uh, but, but usually it's carried in the seed at, at, at a few percent per, so out of 100 plants, you'd expect to see, you know, maybe a few plants that way. Um, normally, when you see fusarium, it, it's in the soil. And, and, and you've planted it out in the soil. Um, and normally with fusarium, you expect to see kind of a, what I call a one-sided wilt. So you see like a part of the plant wilting, you know, one side and, and one side not, or one side of a leaf wilting and one side not. So um, number two is not, that I wouldn't pick that out as being fusarium. So, and, and the other thing about fusarium is that uh, <clears throat> the roots will appear white. Um, actually, they'll, they'll appear healthy, even though the fungus may be going in that way. <clears throat> so the, 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 the problems I was talking about uh, on the roots would be something that discolored the root, like Pythium or Rhizoctonia or something like that. And I don't know about number four. That's very unusual. So somebody's asking, how do we kill fusarium in the soil? Um, but first off, um, there in 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 many modern uh, hybrids, there there's some resistance to to fusarium. Um, how to kill it in the soil is is that's tough. Um, certainly, uh, long crop rotations are are important, but uh, in order to actually kill it, you'd have to use Oh, uh, some kind of a fumigant or maybe a solarization. I don't know if you're familiar with solarization where you are uh, heating the soil with the sun. I would think that in Canada, that would be pretty tough. Um, the other thing that you can do is to plant uh, uh, what they call biofumigants. So like, uh, uh, you know, rapeseed and that kind of stuff and till it into the soil. Um, that doesn't, I can get rid of all the fusarium, but that, that will help.
I Olivier think uh, for... Vas-y, Olivier. I think for number four, um, it's a common sickness that uh, comes from um, uh, too much water. Uh, I think it, we call it the uh, oedème uh, in French. Um, what, what, what does that translate to? <laughs> Can you ask uh, Hugo? <laughs> the oedème. <laughs> but it doesn't look like a, a, a bad sickness, is it? No, no. But the way that the others are, are dying back at the tips, and in one of the pictures, I don't see it here, but one of the pictures, it was the lower leaves that were dying. Mm, yep. Because Hugo showed, uh, saved, uh, showed them to me earlier. And it looked, looked quite serious. Which uh, picture look serious? It's not, it's not here. It was another picture um, that Hugo shared with me and, and it showed the lower leaves were dying. Lower, lower leaves. It, it's one of the ones you emailed to me. Okay. Um, Udam is edema. Oh. Okay, so um, yeah, I see that from time to time. Um, yeah, that, that's not too serious. I see it in growth chambers, for example. That's when I see it or greenhouses, you'll see it once in a while. It's a water relation problem, but it's not anything. As soon as it gets out in the, in the field, I, it, it seems to disappear. Yeah, thank you. If I share my screen, uh, maybe I can show. Oh, no, I can't share my screen. <laughs> I I thought the picture was. Uh... I can um, I can let you share your screen, uh, Olivier. Okay. Let's. Oh, it's. It yeah. says that it, I can't. Uh, ouais, ouais, both the ball participant. Alors, je retourne sur Zoom. Est-ce que toi, tu as le dossier des, des photos? Euh, oui, j'ai le dossier. J'ai le dossier. Peut-être tu peux, toi, toi là, partager l'image. OK. Ouais, que, je vais celle faire que j'ai vue, euh, euh, elle n'a pas de nom. Elle a juste un gros numéro. 94829084. OK. Can you see it? I see resources. Oh, there it is. There it is. Yep. Yeah, that's the one I was talking about. OK. This one? Yes. See how the lower leaves are dying. And so I would expect, so if it was fusarium, and I can't tell for sure, but I, if, if you would expect like not the lower and the top half of the plant, but it, what happens with fusarium is it gets in there and it clogs the, the plumbing of the plant. And it'll be like one half of the plant, the right half or the left half will start wilting. And that's not really a wilt. It, it looks more like a, uh, the leaves are dying. So this is being uh, grown inside in preparation for going outside? I believe so, but I don't know. The, maybe there were no lights on, on, the, on the plants. Right. Well, that would create a problem, but I would expect that would, oh, they'd be long and spindly and they might be pale, but I wouldn't expect the lower leaves to die. Mm -hmm. looks maybe they right didn't plant. take the yogurt out of the bottom of the cup. <laughs> I, but, but I would, I would that what I would do if I was looking at that, I would examine the roots and perhaps split the stem and look for discoloration. I know that that doesn't help. That if, if I was in my lab, that's what I would do. Hmm. What means a discoloration in the uh, stem? That would probably indicate. That would indicate, for example, like a fusarium. Usually you'll see a discoloration in the stem and it'll be in part of the stem and not the other part, just like the leaves were probably wilt on one side of the plant and not the other. Est-ce que tu as d'autres questions, Olivier? <laughs> um, sure, I, I have uh, many questions. Maybe uh, we didn't uh, talk about it yet, but uh, we can organize uh, some questions um, I, 
they were the early stage uh, sickness that uh, we just did and that interests me. Uh, then there are the sickness that uh, live on seeds and the, the, the worst one and the one that we should, should uh, check for. And I, I would like to hear about the treatment, uh, things like, uh, I know uh, about the temperature, what, 50 degree for 20 minutes or, and I've heard about the bleach uh, dilutions in water. Um, and I maybe we can talk about the new sickness, uh, uh, the the lay the last one that you go show the 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 two brown uh, thing <laughs> sickness. Little brown rugose fruit virus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Merci Olivier. So, so I, I'm just going to check with other participants if there's other questions from uh, Isaac, Deprine, Gabriel uh, on the topic of, of early season uh, diseases, and then we can go to uh, discuss seed treatments. Is well, well, uh, I can, start. can I? Okay, we'll see. Go ahead. Merci Gabriel. No, I just wanted to say that I have no question. I'm just here to learn. So, okay, sounds uh, good. All your your questions are great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, hi, hi I, my name is Tapreen. How are you? Hi. <laughs> uh, I'm in Southern Quebec, the Florida of Quebec. Uh, so, I had a question. Um, do the fusarium only show up in the beginning of the season or is it something because you you said oh we we're talking about early season is that only an early season problem no no so so um fusarium will show up if it shows up early in the season for example in in in, in a situation there where you have new mix um and and hopefully help, um, healthy plants uh, the containers are new. Um, if it shows up early in the season, then it, 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 it might mean that it came in on seeds, right? Because if it comes in on seeds, it's going to affect the plant early. And see, depending, depending on a lot of things, but depending on how much fusarium is, the fungus is in the seed, but, it, but, it, but it's an early season thing. But um, how late it shows up in the season uh, will also depend on on how much is in the soil. So, for example, if if there's a lot in the soil right around the roots where where the you transplant the plant, then it might show up then. But a lot of times, uh, it it'll it'll show up only as the roots expand into that fusarium. So, um, with with so for example, with watermelon, which is something I'm more familiar with, uh, we see it right right about now, right about uh, early June uh, when the plants are starting to run uh, with tomatoes um, it, again it would depend on on, on how much fusarium is in the soil but it could be you could see it all the way from the beginning of the season which would probably mean seeds uh, all the way to the end of the season which which probably means that uh, there's been enough fusarium in the soil to, to cause the problem. So is fusarium fungal then? Yes yes and, so and the problem with fusarium is is it has uh, uh, spores that last a very long time in the soil. So even if you haven't planted that uh, tomato crop uh, for a very long time, if there's a little fusarium in the soil, it might last until uh, your next fusarium crop. Okay. And um, if you were to like balance out, say like nematodes and bacteria in your soil, is that a like a natural way to sort of combat fusarium through compost teas and sort of bringing in the elanium approach to balancing that out? Or is it not one of those things that can be killed that way? Probably not. No. But if there is, um, and I guess I didn't bring uh, that that resource with me, but but if you plant uh, things in the cabbage family, some stuff like rapeseed. Uh, there's some mixes that you can plant and put in a bio, what you call a biofume again, a cover crop. But a cover crop in that in that family, and you fill that in. Then that's kind of a, a 
uh, a, 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 a natural way to try to uh, compost that. Um, yeah. Thank you. So the, well, I don't know um, if there's other questions or there's another one about heat treatment in the seeds here. Isaac, uh, pas de question? Okay, let's, uh, let's discuss uh, seed treatments. Um, um, Olivier, Olivier, tu veux commencer? Um, sure, we can talk about uh, but what about the starting with, uh, with the uh, sickness that are um, important on, uh, on, that lives on seeds and maybe it talks about treatments uh, after? Or? Sure. Do you want to um, do you want to uh, uh, start us start off us start us off with uh, some uh, some li some lights around uh, um, seed seed borne diseases, uh, Daniel? In, in, one, in one of those, uh, um, um, actually, I, I think in 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 the the bulletin that I sent along, I talk about some of the diseases that are commonly. I shouldn't say commonly. They're most likely to be uh, born on on seeds, uh, and and I, I would say probably at the top of my list would be bacterial spot. Yeah, there you go. Of 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 tomato, and um, uh, that that's the one that that I think is is in canker. Bacterial canker is another one which is very important. Um, but fusarium is is also there. Um, uh, I know one of the, um, so the, the bulletin I sent along from Ohio State talks about how to treat seeds for bacterial uh, diseases that would not affect uh, fusarium and would, it would not affect uh, the tomato brown rugose fruit virus. So those, those are two different things. Um, so so and if, you, if you decide to, to treat your seeds, um, the, the the bulletin which which I included from Ohio State talks about having two two uh, uh, two water baths one at, at a at a warmer temperature and one at a higher temperature so you would warm the seeds up in the one and, and just get the seeds so that they're fairly warm and then very then then put them into the the hotter one for a, a, a in very very carefully uh, time it. Because if you go too long, then it will affect the viability, as as the, the question here is. And if you go too short, then obviously, yeah. Here's uh, Emily Gatch ha has one from Washington State, but there's another from Sally Miller in that group uh, that talks. But but Emily, if you go down, Emily's actually talks about um, other. Yeah, that's with the House State one there. But he, she talks about other diseases or other crops rather than tomatoes. So that that's a that's a good bulletin as well. Um, what was the first bulletin that you had that you were referring to? Well, uh, I don't know if 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 the one that I had um, managing diseases of tomato. I think the 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 other tab there. I think well that okay. Well, I don't know. One of the ones managing uh, uh, disease. Yeah, this one. So I think. If you go up to the top here, I think um, I talk about so yeah, seed borne. See, so if you go, yeah, go go down one again. Uh, but if you go down, it says seed borne, and then it, you see this is where um, uh, wh which diseases like bacterial spec, bacterial spot, uh, and these are the ones that are likely are are. are likely to be seed borne. Not, not that they're going to be seed borne in every case, but, but early blight, for example, it is, is not going to come in on seeds. So that, that column there would, would uh, uh, let you know which ones to be uh, concerned about. Very good. That makes sense. Yes, I know. <laughs> Maybe. Do you um, do it with, like the heat treatment, is it with the sous vide? I'm sorry? Is the heat treatment done with like a sous vide, like those, um, you know, the the tools that people use to cook meat in oh, water? 
So, so the answer is you may be able to do it that way. The way I've done it is I actually bought two water baths. And, and the reason, I guess I was starting to talk about that, the reason you put it in the, one, the first water bath is just to get the seed warm, not warm enough. And this is what she'll talk about, Sally Miller talks about in this bulletin. You get it warm enough. So if, if you put it from, from cold water directly into the, the, the hot water one, it'll take a while for that seed to get up to temperature. But if you get it warm and, 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 and get it close to that temperature, uh, then, then you can more accurately measure the temperature in the warmer one. <clears throat> so there have been people who, who've experimented, like you're talking about, with different, uh, different equipment. I've not done that. I, I, I don't know. But, but I guess I've, I've, I've cautioned growers about doing this on, you know, kind of on a stove type thing, stove top type thing, because if you, if you treat it too long, you will ruin the germ. Another person asked about um, uh, uh, bleach and, and she talks about, see, here's two, two water baths here, see. Um, but, but, um, but bleach will kill the bacteria on the outside of the seed but it won't kill the bacteria inside the seed. So, so for that reason, um, I, I favor this method. But, but if I was doing it, I would do it and, and be very careful, try a small batch of it first to make sure that you're not ruining the germ. I was able to do this, uh, we were able to do this in the lab and, and figure out a way not to, not to ruin the germ. And of course, I would think uh, if you're, if, if you affect the germ a little bit, that's okay, but you don't want to just completely ruin the germ. Is it the same concept as like compost when we, you like after a certain heat, you kill pathogens in your soil? So like the bad stuff that you want to get rid of, is this the same concept with seed in the hot water? Well, we're not, it, well, I guess not exactly because I don't, that's a, see, that's a good question because <laughs> Uh, that's a good. That's something you're getting into an area we don't know about. So with compost, we want to get it hot enough to kill the pathogens, but not hot enough to kill the good guys. Um, and and if there's good guys in the seeds, we, we just don't know uh, enough to say. I don't know uh, if if there's if there's a temperature at which we can kill the, the the bad guys and not kill the good guys. But what we do know is if you get it too hot, you will kill the germ. So that. That's something that I've talked to Lori Hoagland about. Are there, are there uh, beneficial uh, microbes in the seed that we should try to preserve? And, and we just don't know the answer to that yet. That's a good question. <laughs> should, should we uh, do that for all the tomato seeds and pepper seeds uh, that we harvest? Well, that's gonna have to be a question that you are gonna have to decide. Uh, I would I would try it and in, in small like I say in small batches. Um, you're not treating any of the seed, right? Because oh, I mean it's un, it's not treated with fungicides. Is that correct? No, no. Okay. So because some growers have fungicides on there, and then that's a, a a complication. I would try it on a small basis first and make sure you're not you know hurting the germ. And and, and but um, if if you can get good at it. Uh, then, then, then I, I don't see anything wrong with doing that. And the one uh, by Emily uh, Gatch from Washington State, she had she talked about other um, cucurbits and other seeds. But cucurbits, uh, if you treat them at the same temperature that you treat tomato seeds, you're, you're probably it's more sensitive to higher temperatures. You have to be very careful. Which one is more sensitive? Cucurbits. Watermelon, cantaloupe, yeah. and that's, I think that'll be, I think that's an Emily's article. She talks about that. Uh, I'm not sure, Daniel, if you saw Isaac's question that uh, he was asking, I would like to know how heat treatment affects viability of the seeds. Is there any problem on Olivia's pictures that could come from the seed he sells? Or at first sight, it is mainly the growing conditions. I would, I, my, my, at first sight, I would say it's the growing conditions. That, that's my, my guess. And, um, and then he also adds, I've heard some market growers use a simple, simple thermos with hot water from the heat tank to um, disinfect their, their seeds. 
I never, I never argue with success. <laughs> so if that works for you, fine. But I, I just would be very careful when I'm talking to growers and I'm imagining them, them trying to do this on the stove top and, and having inadequate uh, 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 equipment and, and, and thermometers, I think it'd be very easy to either kill the, the ruin the germination or on the other hand, not get it hot enough. So in, in fact, I thought about writing a grant at one time to try to get equipment and I would keep it here, for example, then growers could come visit me and, and, and use it. Um, and I, I, for a couple of reasons, I didn't get around to doing that. But I think uh, in New York State, they wrote one like that so that, because uh, you could probably spend a few or several hundred dollars buying those water baths. Uh, now, if you could split that, that, t that, that, that uh, uh, cost over several growers or something, it's not that bad. But for one grower, that would be uh, probably a lot to do. Do you have an estimate of the, of the cost of the equipment? I would guess you could easily spend five or six hundred dollars on those water baths. And like I say, what I, what I did for my lab is I bought a, a, a larger one, which I would, I would actually, I came with the lab, a larger one that I keep the seeds warm in ahead of time, and then a smaller one that was very accurate, and then that one would be the higher temperature. So with two water baths like that, I, I'm, I'm sure you could spend five, six, seven hundred dollars on that. Plus, you know, some some really good thermometers. So, and you can't you can't use the kind of thermometers you put at your forehead. You know, that won't work. Est-ce qu'il y a d'autres questions sur les les traitements à l'eau chaude? Is it three hundred? Is it five hundred dollars per bath or? I would think if for two for two um, for two water baths, I would think that there are three or four hundred dollars each. I, I could be wrong. I mean, once you have them, you have them, right? So if you could do that and 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 sh like I say, share the cost among growers, it's not bad. But if you're just talking about one small grower, then that's that's probably going to be too much. In, so in, you need to get Hugo to buy them for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> apply for a grant and uh, we, yeah. we, we, we discuss we discuss with growers how, how equipment sharing but the challenge of distance is right. uh, is a big one right um, I think ultimately uh, it would be better if, if each grower does the um, the treatment themselves right because you know, if they sent them to you, Hugo, for example, and you did it and it didn't turn out, then, then you don't want it to be your fault. You want yeah. each person to do it the way that they do it. So. Yeah, there's a, the quality and assurance and uh, right. standards, yeah, right. yeah protocols. Uh, Isaac asks, is asking, um, let's say I treat a batch of tomato seeds at adequate temperature. Do you know how long the seeds will be viable? Do you know the, the, the length of viability associated with uh, I think that, I, 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 you, this this bulletin will say but I okay. think they wanted you to plant it pretty soon afterwards ah. I, I, I I don't I don't think you want to uh, do that and plant it next year I, I I'd have to I should have read that before I uh, sent it to you but um, I went around for a while and and, and uh, you know, every year I have something different. I went around and talked about that. I don't know if anybody took me up on it, but yeah, here you got different temperatures for different um, uh, different crops. Great. Thanks for answering I had, I had uh, a, Isaac's question. I had a Tip, question. Go ahead, Teprin. Um, so the idea is that the heat treatment will be more effective if you warm up the seeds in the smaller and the cooler one first like or is yeah. there really in the end a real difference if you just shock them no it's so the, the the first what you said the first time so so when you time that you want it to be very very accurate so if you start it and it was sitting in a bag at room temperature it's going to take it a while to warm up to that temperature but if you put it in the first water bath and let it get close to that temperature, 
um, then and let it equilibrate, then it won't have very far to go to, to that 50 degrees. Okay, and so it's not, it's not that you're shocking it, it's just that you want it to be as accurate as possible. And so you don't start counting the minutes until you've actually reached the temperature desired. So you don't count those, say if it took, if you're in the least, like the cooler bath, it's not part of the 25 minutes for the right. treatment, say for the Brussels sprouts. That's it's only correct. once it hits 50 degrees. Okay, thank you. But once, but once you put it in there, you're gonna assume that it's that temperature, right? Once you put it in the hotter water bath, you'll, you'll start the clock right then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and, and do you ever put peroxide? In any of the water? So, so now they don't talk about that here, but I would think that peroxide, no, not, not in the hot water treatment, but it, so the chlorine treatment is one that, that gets rid of the surface bacteria, bacteria pathogens on the seed surface. Peroxide would be a similar type thing. They don't talk about that here, and I've not done that, but it, it that might be something that, that you'd have to experiment with and, and, and see how that works. You want to have a neighbor do that and see if it ruins the germ, right? <laughs> but that, yeah, that's that's a good point. And uh, if you wanted to do a seed treatment and your your seeds are are in the freezer, is there a specific uh, a specific consideration? In the in the freezer or in the refrigerator? Uh, in in either in um, pick your scenario. I'm, I'm I. So one of those um, one of the um, seed treatment um, seminars that I sent you talks about how to store seeds, and I think they talked about kind of a cool dark. I keep it in a fridge. I keep it in a fridge, and I don't think that there would be any problem taking it from a fridge and and, and then working with it. I don't, I don't know about a freezer, but, um, but I think that they like to keep those in a kind of a cool, dark room. It would be fine. Um, Isaac asks, uh, I think you, you, we, we um, talked about that a bit earlier, perhaps. He asks what uh, heat treatments, um, w which diseases are, are, are not, uh, are not uh, eliminated by heat treatments. You were saying the, the, the pathogens that are inside the seed and then there's specific diseases that won't get uh, that won't uh, a heat treatment won't get rid of right so uh what we're talking about here is bacterial this is bacterial spot um and, and and we're talking about that i think bacterial canker you could get rid of that way but uh fusarium uh i i just think that's a different uh pathogens uh anthracnose um, I don't think you're going to get rid of those in, in the same way. It, are, are people pretty much using uh, heirlooms or are you using hybrids that have resistance? Uh, heirloom. Heirlooms, okay. Yeah. Because um, a lot of the modern uh, hybrids have, and I um, have, um, I mean, I'm growing an heirloom uh, it, on my organic plot this year, <laughs> but. But the disadvantage of doing that is, is that uh, they will be susceptible to a great many more diseases like fusarium, verticillium, or root knot. Teprin, do you want to read out what, uh, what you wrote? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I've been expecting, because I had a batch of. Um, Eggplant seeds that just not germinate. So one of our, like one of the sort of mentor seed growers in Quebec, Chris Fortier uh, from Kamouraska, Société des Plantes, he, I talked to him and so I tried peroxide treatment, 50% peroxide treatment for, the first one I did was six hours and didn't see a change. And then I did one at like overnight and I saw a like a pretty big increase in my germination. But I wasn't doing it for, I didn't, didn't, didn't really know that you could treat disease with, like, I mean, I, it, now obviously, yes, because I use bleach to clean my, um, my seeds, my tomato seeds. But um, 
So it was pretty neat because it's like bores these little holes a tiny little bit and open, like softens up almost like the, the, the way um, you, you um, cook corn in a lye solution, sort of like ease up the, the coating almost of the seed. And uh, they germinate it better. So you're, 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 referring, you're referring to a coating that you put on the eggplant seeds to increase germination? No, just soak them overnight in peroxide. It's three percent peroxide. Just before six, planting six them. Six hours didn't work. No, to sell them as seeds. Oh, okay, to, to sell them. Just to increase the germination rate. I always do bleach treatment of all my solanaceae, but I just when I couldn't get a good germ out of my eggplants, I used peroxide, and it and it did work. I mean, I'd have to do it multiple times for it to be a real experiment. But I'm growing new eggplants this year, so. I'll, uh, I like, and I did try it in batches. I didn't throw all my seeds in there. That's for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. Did you have any comments, uh, Daniel? Um, I don't like eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's 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 it's. I, I can't believe that there is that much pathogen that that uh, she's getting rid of. So it must have. It there must be something else some coating or something that the peroxide is getting rid of or or maybe you know what when they say priming seeds uh you you, you just get them started germinating um i don't know but eggplants are related to tomatoes so um if it works for eggplants uh, maybe it'll work for tomatoes or pepper hmm. Um, Isaac says, uh, what I understand is that a seed, as a seed producer, I should not heat treat the seeds I sell, but I could heat treat the seeds before I sow them for production. That's, that's an interesting question. I guess, um, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, I would, I would, so I would heat treat the ones but that you're sowing. Um, I've been told um, that 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 big tomato seed companies will heat treat the seeds. I I don't know if that's true or not. So I'm not I'm not totally against that. But you'd have to be very very clear that you're doing that, and 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 you'd have to be very clear with the germination, and and I think I would put that. You know, when you sell that, make sure that the buyer understands that. Um, but and and again, uh, read that. Go ahead, read that bulletin. But I think that when you when you heat treat it, it, it makes it, it it probably affects the uh, uh, how the viability, how long it's viable, right? So. Um, if you were doing that, you'd have there be have to be an understanding that they were going to plant it in within a certain time period. Would there would there be a difference in terms of if I'm selling seeds uh, in packets versus you know selling seeds uh, in in larger quantities to a, a farmer, for example, because most the uh, the people on the call are are sell mostly by in seed packets size and and gardeners keep their seeds for 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 several years uh, whereas a farmer might might uh, all uh, sow it off in the in the season yeah i think if there was an understanding that uh, that, that that's what you were doing and 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 that the customer understood that i i, I think that would be fine So yeah, so treat smaller batches and do it each year when you're ready to sell. All oh, spinach and carrot seeds, yeah. So are you heating the, the spinach and carrot seeds for uh, disease or? Yeah, it's for disease, uh, but I'm not the one in charge of it. It's uh, Jean-François who is the owner of the seed company I, I work for. Uh, so maybe people can get in touch with him, but I just wanted to know uh, to tell you that um, we do a heat uh, ha, uh, do a heat treatment with uh, carrots, spinach, and I think there's others also. So and we won't sell them 
all in the same year. So we did we do it one time uh, after the the record, after we harvested, and then we're gonna keep selling them. And the um, and the germination tests tests are great, so um, it worked for us. Okay. Yeah. But uh, people can get in touch with Jean Francois, maybe you are with me and I can uh, ask Jean Francois sure. later on. Ça marche. Mm -hmm. okay. um, are there other questions around tomatoes? Olivier? Yeah, I, I'm um, interested uh, about uh, understanding more about sickness that uh, lives on the in a Solanaci family, can uh, the sickness that attack tomatoes, can, is there some that attacks peppers uh, as well? Well, certainly back, there's a bacterial spot that goes to pepper as well, yes. Um, I believe, well, there's an anthracnose that affects peppers as well. I don't know how important that is. Um, and uh, as far as seedborne, but I think it it it, it it's there. I, I like to say there's there's kind of two ways in in which uh, diseases become seedborne. So if you look at a disease like anthracnose on peppers, so anthracnose on peppers or on tomatoes, on tomatoes, anthracnose it it, it starts off uh, and causes a, just kind of a uh, at first it's a sunken spot and a soft spot. And then eventually you'll see something growing on that. Uh, and on a pepper, uh, it's same, same way, it'll be soft and, and eventually you'll see the, the fungus growing on that. So, so anthracnose can become seedborne because it's on the outside of the fruit, okay? It's on the outside. And so if you think about the fruit, uh, it's on the outside and you're saving seeds and it's, it's very possible to have that fungus or the bacteria, whatever, get on the seeds. The other way that, that um, uh, the pathogen, the, the fungus or the bacteria get in the seed is like with fusarium, it comes up through the vascular system, up through the plumbing and gets in the seed that way. Okay. So, uh, so, so there, there, there's kind of, I guess, two ways. So you think about it. Uh, diseases like uh, uh, canker, bacterial canker, that are systemic within the plant can get in the, the fruit uh, through the systemic uh, nature. It's going through the xylem and ends up right in the seed. Something like the actual spot, there's actual spots on the seed and that's how it gets in there. Now this, this picture here is, um, uh, of course, blossom, uh, Lost the min rot, and of course that's a nutritional problem. So that that there there's no nothing on the seed there. The other one is botrytis, and and I don't know if botrytis can be seedborne or not. But there's so much of it around that the seedborne nature of it doesn't really matter. Does the the fact that there's two main ways of transmission? Uh, uh, what are the implications of that in terms of when we're considering treatments? I don't know that it, it, it matters as far as what, considering treatments. It's just that um, I think it's good to know that, that if you have a disease like canker or, or fusarium that, that are systemic in the plant, that even if the fruit is, is uh, perfect looking, so if you're thinking about saving seeds from your field, right, uh, and, and, and the fruit is perfect looking, if you have, and, and, and bacterial canker, there's a lot of times when it does not cause um, lesions on the fruit, even though the, 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 the plant is diseased. Uh, and, and certainly fusarium does not cause any lesions on the fruit. But you, if you realize that the, the disease is in that field and it's systemic in nature, goes through the plant, then you'll know that it's dangerous to save seeds from, from that field and that plant. On the other hand, it, knowing that uh, you have a, a, a a fruit that has disease on the surface, you know that that's kind of dangerous to save seeds from that as well. So part of, I guess, what we haven't talked about is obviously we talk about seed treatments, but in, in a perfect world, what, what you'd like to do is save seeds from a, uh, a field in, in which there, there isn't, as far as you know, any disease. So nutritional 
uh, diseases like back, like blossom rot are not going to transfer to the uh, uh, to the seed. I'm not sure what you mean by waterborne disease. Uh, you know? Like so, if you water too much, you know, sometimes when you water tomatoes too much, they get sick. I don't know if it's like a mildew or. Well, so like uh, like if you water too much and they get like a pythium on the roots, that's not going to go to the seed. Okay, that's that's what I want. Yeah, you're you're outside. Okay, don't it's really hot background. in my house. Yeah, it's so <laughs> hot in my house. I can't stand it. <sighs> uh, it's uh, almost eight p.m. Il est bientôt vingt heures. Um, are there any closing comments that uh, that uh, uh, growers <laughs> want to? Yeah, vas-y, Olivier. The brown uh, oh, yeah. virus. Uh, we never didn't talk about it yet. Oh, okay. Um, so I've I've read I've read several things about the 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 tomato brown rugos fruit virus. Um, some some places I've read that it's not a real good seed pathogen. I mean, it, I mean, it, it'll it'll be on seed, but it's not super efficient. But but it is still something that, that you need to be worried about. Um, but it, and it also it can be mainly else on the outside of the seed, but it can also be on the inside of the seed. Do you have it in Canada? I think we don't. That, that's what I thought. I don't think you do. Um, we don't have it in Indiana, but um, so there's a lot of information about avoiding uh, saving seeds from plants that have this virus or fields that have this virus. It, it can be seed borne, but the main way it's transmitted is through uh, any kind of cultural technique, plants touching each other, or people harvesting, that kind of stuff. I think the seed borne nature is how it spreads around the world. Um, uh, I read, I read in one place that you could use, and I don't think this is an organic treatment, but where did I put that? Trisodium phosphate, ten percent solution. I don't know what to do with that. Um, and this was somebody at at the University of Davis, but then I did I couldn't read it any place else. So, um, but but he seemed to be saying it was mainly on the outside of the seed, but but I I don't have any evidence that the hot water treatment would affect the virus. I don't, I don't know that it would affect the virus. We buy seed from all over the, the world sometimes. So I guess yeah. that we're, we should check if, uh, if we see a virus like that. Um, yeah, so. Um, Good point. You, you need to, you need to, uh, I don't know if you have uh, access to to a laboratory that that could do that kind of sophisticated testing for you. Apparently, this virus is related to tobacco mosaic virus. So if you tested for tobacco mosaic, it would turn out to be positive. But you'd need to do additional testing to be sure whether it was this rugos fruit virus. Mm -hmm. But but yeah. So if you if you saw something. Uh, you you need to act quickly. I'm uh, seeing a question from Isaac. Uh, we had we had a patch of tomatoes last year. Perfect plants, perfect fruits outside, but all were brownish inside. One friend suggested it could be a boar problem. Any ideas? Well, I mean, certainly, uh, if it was, it, it sometimes it's hard to find, but it's certainly any kind of boar problem. This is tomatoes, right? Yeah. Um, you, you, we should find a hole someplace. I mean, there, there should be, there should be a hole someplace. On, sometimes it's hard to find, but if there's no hole, then it's harder to explain how, how it got in there. I don't know if they were all the tomatoes, but, but there are some nutritional problems. Uh, that that uh, that caused it to be brown inside. Okay. Ça répond à ta question, uh, Isaac. 
Oh, borax? What does it say? Borax? No, he, he said uh, I meant borax, but... Oh, uh, bor. Oh, I, I got it. I got it. Yeah. Um, is, is there any last questions? Dernière question? Um, What's your astrological sign? <laughs> <laughs> I was born January 17th. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I, I have a question for you, Daniel. What, uh, on, on what email can they contact you? So the, the, the um, eagle at purdue.edu. Got it. That, that's a good way to, to contact me. I'll add, it, I'll add it to the presentation and I'll share, yes. the, share, share it around. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very happy to, um, um, to answer any questions I can. I, it's frustrating to me to be able to look at those plants and not be able to dig into them and find out more about mm -hmm. what it is. Mm -hmm. do, do, do you have any advice in terms of taking pictures? Like what, what is a, uh, what kind of pictures mm -hmm. you, you, you are, are so, you know? so what, when I get pictures, well, the pictures that, that were sent uh, were, were, were good ones, I thought, but, but when I get pictures, don't, don't take pictures of the worst plant and don't pictures of the best plan. I want kind of a series, you know. So, so um, take pictures uh, at, at various stages of, of the plan of, of whatever's happening to it, so I can kind of see a progression. And and then sometimes I like to take, uh, you know, kind of a close up, so I can look at the at the lesion at the at the spot itself, for example. Uh, but then sometimes it's nice to have a picture, so you can see. Uh, uh, well, what the what the field looks like? Uh, are they all in one corner, for example, or are they down one row, or that kind of thing? So, come kind of give me a little bit of a <coughs> feel <coughs> for how it looks. Uh, basically, the more the better. If they're if they're too big, you can put them in the cloud and send me a link, or you can send several emails. But we'll we'll get it figured out somehow. And of course, the, the better the quality, the, 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 the better I'll be able to tell what it is. Great, thanks, Daniel. Thank you for all your questions. Merci pour vos questions. Et puis, je vous souhaite une très bonne soirée. I wish thank you a great evening. Thank, thank you very much, Daniel. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. It was great. You're very welcome. Bye. Merci Bye. Ça fait plaisir. Bye. 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 Merci. Bye.